Hey everybody, and we are on to whiskey number seven in our Distillery Wars Workhorse Whiskey Shootout. It's gonna be Maker's Mark. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, and thank you so much for joining me today here on Blind Whiskey Reviews, the most honest reviews on YouTube. We are on to whiskey number seven in our Distillery Wars shootout. This is obviously Maker's Mark. Now, it doesn't look like the standard Maker's Mark, and I was super upset when I went to go buy these whiskeys because they did not have the one with the red wax. The standard Maker's Mark, the classic Maker's Mark with the red wax, they had this wonky blue and white wax, which I don't know what this is, but it was the only Maker's Mark I can get, and I really wanted to buy all the whiskeys from the same place just to say that you know we're trying to keep things as even as possible and remove variables, so buying them all from the same store seemed to be the, the right thing to do, and they did not have the red wax. So I was a little bit bummed about that, but it is what it is. It should be the same whiskey in the bottle, so there's that. Maker's Mark is obviously an iconic brand, which is why it's part of our Distillery Wars shootout here. Um, they And they had a couple whiskeys we could have picked from. Obviously they have the standard Maker's Mark, which is what I went with. I probably could have put Maker's 46 in there if I wanted, but um, I can get it for less than $30, which is one of the criteria that I put on this shootout series. But um, I know other people can't. Um, I can get it for about 26 bucks, which is strange because I know other people are paying in the mid 30s to 40 bucks for Maker's 46. So um, I didn't think that I should do that because I wanted, really wanted to make sure we focus on the iconic workhorse whiskeys. And I felt like Maker's Mark was more of a premium offering from them. So I went with the standard Maker's. Um, as I've mentioned in all the other videos, if you want to check out the other videos in this series, Click the playlist up here. It'll be linked up in the corner and down in the description below. Check out the playlist. I will be updating that constantly with all the videos from this series. So if you're coming in a little bit later behind the times with this, um, you can check out the shootouts and everything else in that playlist. Um, I've never reviewed the standard makers mark on this channel. So this is the first time we're cracking the standard makers on the channel. So I'm actually pretty excited. I just wish it had that dang red wax. But like I said, is what it is. So let's get this wax off and or see if we can get it off. Like I said, it's been a while since I had Maker's, so I can't remember if it had a screw top. I felt like it was corked, but maybe I'm wrong. All right, we'll have to unbury that screw top from the wax later. All right, my battery just died on me, so I took the opportunity to unbury the cap from the wax, put it back on the bottle, but let's get into this whiskey. Yeah, very standard like Maker's Mark nose. It's got such a just light, light fruit, apple, pear. And to me, Maker's almost has this, always has this like slightly medicinal quality to it. Really heavy on the corn sweetness. A little bit of vanilla hiding in there. All right, that's about all. I mean, I don't expect a ton of complexity coming out of Maker's. I've never thought of Maker's Mark as a complex whiskey. So it's just always just been a very easy drinking, smooth, um, approachable whiskey. So let's see how it fares. Yeah, up front you got the light fruits, the apple, the pear, slight bit of citrus. As it goes over the mid palate, you get into like vanilla, some like honey sweetness. There's a little bit of like bitey oak bitterness towards the back of the palate, along with that it's not very strong, it's not very bold, but it's almost like the, I don't know if it's coming from the wheat or what, because if for those of you that don't know, Maker's Mark is a weeded whiskey, which means they replace the rye content of the normal bourbon recipes with wheat. So it ends up being a little bit of a sweeter product. You don't get a lot of those spicier notes typically in a weeded whiskey. And this one really has no spice to speak of.
It's very solid, very drinkable, good flavor, but not complex. I wouldn't say that it feels thin like a couple of the other whiskeys we've been going through during this lead up to our shootout. Um, this one doesn't feel thin. It feels, it got a medium mouth feel. And the, the whiskey is reasonably bold in flavor. It's just not very complex. There's not too many notes. You know, you get a few different notes. They're all pretty good. They're all pretty well balanced. So it's a well-made whiskey, but it's not something you can really just sit here and dig into and think about and ponder and, you know, drink for an hour on at an end trying to figure out all the flavors you can find in it. It's not that whiskey. It's just a very approachable, easy whiskey to drink. One more taste and we'll get out of here. I actually think it's pretty good and I don't remember liking Makers as much as I like this right now. So hopefully that's not just because it's a neck pour. Hopefully it stays this good throughout the shootout and we'll see how it does against some of these other whiskeys. It's definitely one of the sweeter of the bunch, I feel like. And I feel like that honey sweetness is pretty typical of what they put out. Um, it's why I really like what they do with the Makers 46 or some of the other lines that they're doing. Or that I just reviewed the RC6, which is their first limited release. And just adding those oak staves to this, what is a, not a very complex whiskey, adding those oak staves really provides some of that complexity and depth and flavors you're just not going to get out of this whiskey. So I think that's pretty interesting. It's really cool that they're doing that because... It's what people like me want. We want to add that complexity and see a little bit more depth here. So as a whiskey that, I, um, you know, comparing this to some of the finer whiskeys in the world, is it one of those? No, certainly not. But it's an easy drinking, budget, workhorse whiskey. This would make a very good cocktail. I think the sweetness would really play into an old fashioned. Um, if you lean a little bit, maybe a little heavy into the bitters, it would really go well with it. And this is a $20 bottle of whiskey. So I think you're definitely getting your money's worth out of $20 for this product. So anyways, we will see how it fares against the other whiskeys very shortly here. We have one more whiskey to go that I will unveil to you guys tomorrow. And then we will get into our shootouts next week. So I'm really excited. Can't wait. Again, we're on whiskey number seven. Let me know in the comments down below which whiskey do you think is in the lead at the moment? Who do you think is going to win? I can't wait to hear what you guys' results are. because You know, these blind shootouts, you never really can tell who's going to win. You think you know and in the end you end up having no idea and, the, and maybe a dark horse comes out so really excited to see the results of this as always guys i sourced a lot of this these suggestions for these whiskeys on instagram and twitter which my account is blind underscore reviews make sure you're following me on both those accounts that way you can give me your opinion on what you want to see in our next shootout series that might be rye that might be bottled and bond it might be high proof whiskey i want to hear your opinion though so definitely make sure you're following me so i can get that from you there um, as always, you can also catch me at Mission Bottle Kill on Instagram, and you can send me an email at Blind Whiskey Reviews. That's whiskey with an e at gmail.com. And until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.